So in today 15 minutes as usual. We will cover some nice topics in PowerPoint which are immediately useful to you. Let's start with something which we already use called smart art. Smart art is you put some text and then click on convert to smart art and then choose the most relevant diagram. So you type the text and PowerPoint helps you convert it to the right kind of visualization. Now in this dialogue it by default shows 20 diagrams, but that's not it. Sometimes we do find the relevant diagram here, but very often we don't. So the most important button here is the more smart ad graphic, which we never click. More means more trouble. That's what our life looks like, so we never click on it. So click on the more smart art button and I'll tell you when and how to use the right smart art because there are 145 different smart art options available. Most of us use few and we don't even know what are the others. The correct way of learning this is take out 10 minutes. Nowadays we have a lot of time. Go to this dialogue, insert smart art and then do this. Go to each category, then click on each item in the category. Look at the bigger expanded version. It also tells you when to use this. So take one extra moment to read at least the first sentence here. That is applied knowledge when to use this diagram. Once you have done this exercise, 10 15 minutes, whatever it takes, that's a good investment because now you have built a visual vocabulary and then you can use it. For example, if you are comparing pros and cons, this is the best diagram. If you are doing org chart, I'm sure many of you use it. There are seven or different types of org charts. This is a comparatively less used diagram, but look at this. There is a global strategy. There is a national implementation. There is local. There is not really a hierarchy. What is local can be overridden by national and global overrides that. We want to show that. Or this is the best diagram. This diagram itself is called containment. Now sometimes smart art is bad because if you try to do something, for example, if I try to increase the size of this particular shape, what is going to happen? It's not going to happen in isolation. It's going to affect the sizes of other shapes because smart art is a collective diagram. It's not isolated shapes. Sometimes you don't want that. So when smart art is interfering with the control you want, then you go to convert to shapes and then you can do whatever you want. So here is an example of an iterative diagram I created. Then I converted it to shapes and then I can have full control over what it does. So I am showing an iterative process. In fact, this is the process you should follow to utilize office tools effectively. Explore, learn, apply, share and grow. And now I wanted these arrows to be rotating, which is impossible in a smart art, but now that they are separate shapes, I can animate them and get what I want. So step one smart art and then convert it to shapes and do whatever you want. Now there's another aspect of presentation. Sometimes we have too many slides and I want a sort of a menu. For example, here I have few slides on Excel, few on Word, few on PowerPoint, and initially I want to show a sort of a menu to my customer saying I have all these topics. You choose what do you want first? What do you want second? All of you know how to do this. You put a hyperlink here and that hyperlink jumps to the Excel slides and then what happens? Of course, it will jump to the beginning of Excel slides. There are few Excel slides after those finish. It's going to spill over to PowerPoint. You don't want that. So what do we do? We go to the last slide in Excel, put a hyperlink back. That is the inefficient way of doing it. That means you are helping PowerPoint. There is a much smarter, unbelievably good way of doing it. Let me show you that. This is how you let PowerPoint help you. Go to Zoom, insert Zoom. We know insert link just next to it, insert Zoom. This requires new version of PowerPoint, by the way. Then choose summary Zoom. It shows you all your slides and then all that you have to do is select the slides which are at the beginning of different topics. So I've selected one for Word, one for Excel, 
one for PowerPoint and one for summary. And then what happens? It actually gives you a new section called summary section. There is a new slide created there. It looks like this. And now what happens when I click on word? It will go and show all word slides, come back to this slide and so on and so forth without you doing a single hyperlink. So if you have not tried Zoom, please try it immediately. Incidentally, it created sections automatically which you can also create. For example, here is word topic starting right click add section like that. You can have these sections. What is the benefit? You can collapse all the sections and then you can reorganize large presentations by simple drag draw. There are more benefits of sections. Go to my blog. You will find a lot of good stuff. Now another very nice feature Microsoft has introduced in PowerPoint is using artificial intelligence. It's called design ideas. What does that mean? You don't struggle with PowerPoint. You just tell PowerPoint what you want and it will figure it out. So you type this title. It will find the image. You insert pictures. It will arrange them. Let's see it in action. Now where is this button design ideas? We'll see later. So I just type cat clicked on the design ideas button. It found a cat. Then unicorn, which is not there. No problem. It found it. Two types of unicorn in fact. It also does something else. I wrote small planes fly at 16,000 feet. I just typed the text and then I clicked on design ideas. Notice what it did. It actually found a nice small plane, but how how much is the height called 16,000 feet? Difficult to assimilate. So it automatically converted it to this sentence. This concept is called perspectives. So many times you will see when some dimensions of a place are being so we say they are equivalent to two football fields or five Olympic size pools. Those are called perspectives that is also done using AI. Here is another example. I am saying something saves so many minutes difficult to visualize. So it says oh that translates to two and a half months and of course it found a calendar picture as well. All this is happening with just one click. It's not just finding pictures. It also understands different things. For example, this is a timeline. This was created by design ideas automatically. Not only that, now you notice that PowerPoint has icons. And it finds icons for pictures. So I'm trying to explain what is project management and it finds the icons. Of course, you can change them if you don't like it, but notice how smart it is. When it says cost, it didn't put dollar or rupees or some specific currency. It put something which looks like currency, but it's neutral, so it's very useful. Another nice place is when you want to arrange pictures. I have so many pictures. I don't want to waste time cropping them, so click it finds it. But then invariably you will find another picture you forgot. No problem. Add that and then again. In fact, this time if design ideas is on, it will automatically do it. You don't even have to click on it. So that's how design ideas is very smart. Another very smart feature which is probably not explored at all is called morph. It's not a replacement to animation. It goes beyond animation. So let me give you an example, then you understand better. Let's have a simple slide with a shape on it. Then I want that shape to move rotate change in size and change the color. So what I do, I don't do any animation because animation cannot change color. Animation cannot change other things. So I just duplicated the slide. Then on the second slide, I just change whatever I wanted to to that shape. Right now these are two separate slides, but now you go to the second slide, go to the transitions menu and click on morph. That's all there is to it. What does it do? It looks at the equivalent shapes, figures out what has changed and the in between animation is done automatically. In if you understand animation as a topic, this is called in betweening or tweening, which is done by PowerPoint. So let me show you this in action. This is the first slide. You know what is the second slide? It's an orange shape which is bigger and tilted and that's how it does the animation completely on its own. Now of course this is a very simple animation to show you how morph works, but let me show you a practical example of this. In the next example, what I want to illustrate is we 
are inefficient in the way we communicate with documents. So what happens? I have a document. I need multiple people to edit the document. What do you do? You send a mail with CC to others. So what I want in the next slide is all these five or four people should get a mail from me. So what I've done here is on this slide that document is actually five document icons on top of each other. In the next slide, what did I do? I just moved them to individual places and applied morph and this is the result. Then next step I want to show these guys replied to me. I duplicated this slide, brought them back again, use morph and without animation. I got this effect. Now I want to copy paste, copy paste, make a sixth presentation, sixth PPT or six document. No problem. I just arrange them on top of each other and again use morph. So now you get the idea how morph can make you express better with minimal effort. One more round. You get the idea. By the way, morph works with text as well. So here is an example. First slide has ABCD randomly arranged. Second slide has thank you. You apply morph, but because it is text, one more extra steps. Effect options, characters. Why is this step required? Because by default, morph works on objects or shapes. We have to tell this guy to work on characters or word. So now this is how it will look. There is a random text and then it will arrange itself into thank you. Now obviously in real life, you don't want to show the random characters, keep them out of the slide and then gives you a nice impact. Now here is another very nice feature which has been recently introduced and uses AI. What you do is suppose I have an audience and probably some of you are from other countries. Maybe you don't understand English. So we have subtitles in slideshow menu subtitles and then we do it. Choose the language in which you're going to speak and the language in which you want to translate and then run subtitles. So this I'm going to do live. So give me a minute to enable subtitles. So I'm going to enable subtitles now. Now whatever I'm speaking is going live that audio stream to Microsoft AI server and I'm not talking particularly slowly. I'm talking fast. I'm not trying to help this feature. This guy is trying to understand what I'm talking and translating it live. You will notice that sometimes it goes ahead, translates and comes back because it's reading ahead. If it made a mistake in translation, it's correcting it dynamically. So this is how it works. In fact, very soon a separate mobile app is coming called PowerPoint Live where individual person sitting in the audience can choose their language and multilingual live translation can also happen. So if you have not used this feature before, use it. It's very nice, especially if you're presenting to people who don't understand English. Now like that, there is another feature which is very nice, but this one is available only on browser. So let me go to my browser version. I have this presentation here and I am not very good at presenting. I want some guidance. So what do I do? I go to rehearse with coach. This is only available on browser. When I go, it starts a sort of a rehearsal. So notice what happens. It is starting the presentation. It's a real presentation in full screen mode. And uh, now let me just navigate to the correct slide. And it will start in presenter mode or what we call it as. Rears mode, so it's saying start rehearsing as you can see at the bottom. Now when I say start rehearsing, it's not just looking at what I'm doing, where I'm clicking and how much time I'm taking. It's understanding what I'm doing. So this is a slide about pivot table. Pivot table instant flexible analysis. Dynamic charts discovering new information. Uh, sometimes I don't remember what to do next. So notice I lowered my pitch. It understood. So now I'm talking in a higher pitch, but if I talk too fast or if I talk too slow, it detects all of that. So notice during my presentation, I was fluctuating in the pace. My target pitch went down. It was monotonous, so it is showing me all that in a nice chart. I try to read out the content of the slide itself saying don't read the content. You talk something extra. 
and then I said, oh, basically something like that. And then overall face. Now, of course, I did it for a few slides. You should do it for the entire presentation and there are some more content again. And very important at the end of it, you should. Practice this, rehearse it again so that it shows you where you have improved. So that is how this works. Now this video, of course, I'm going to re-record because there was an interruption and the video will be available on my YouTube. That is the URL. So if you go there, all the videos till today and future will be there. Plus there are many, many more videos on my YouTube. Have a look. So translate feature, I'm going to go from top to bottom. Translate feature, you go to subtitle settings, choose the spoken language. That means the language you are going to speak in. Then choose the other language in which you want to translate it. That's it. Then you run the presentation and when you're running the presentation, you have to do one more extra steps. Right click and choose start subtitles. That is how the subtitles will start. Now showing the morph feature again. So look at this. On this slide, I have a simple shape. I want this shape to move, rotate, whatever. So I'm just going to duplicate this slide. Control D is duplicate. Now in the second slide, I'm going to change the shape, orientation, whatever I want basically. Don't delete the shape, but other than that, you can do whatever you want. And now in the second slide, you go to transition menu, click on morph. That's it. If you want, you can choose the duration it takes to move or morph itself from first slide to second slide. And now it looks like this. So I'm going. you should start from the first slide to see how it looks. There's the previous state. This is the uh, transition and this is the final state. This is how morph works. How to put Excel attached in a presentation? OK, I'll quickly do that. So I'm going to go to insert and choose. In this case, you have to choose object because you want a file to be inserted. And in this case, you will not say create new, you will create it from an existing file. So I'm going to just add a file here. All right. Now important at this stage is to click on display as icon. Otherwise the I content content of the Excel sheet itself will try to be inserted and that's a disaster. Yeah, if you want, you can link so that it doesn't increase the presentation size. At this stage, this is not a link. So if the PPT is 10 MB and the Excel is 10 MB, that 10 MB of Excel will be added and the PowerPoint size will increase. If you don't want that, you say link. The disadvantage of link is it is linked on your PC. So if you carry the PPT, you will not be able to see it. Now what happens is when I'm running the presentation, when I click on this icon, nothing is going to happen. I want something to happen. So before clicking on the presentation, during editing mode, what do you do? You go to click on the icon, choose insert action. And here you say what happens on mouse click. So object action, you say open. And now when you run the presentation, during the presentation, the mouse cursor will change to hand and Excel will open without disturbing the presentation. That's how it works. Rahul is asking when we use the online ideas for manipulation. No, in no data is stored by Microsoft. It takes it there, converts it, sends it back and deletes it. I'm using Office Professional 2016. Will that translate work? Uh, it's not Office Pro. It has to be Office, which is cloud connected. That is Office Pro Plus. So because this requires your audio to be sent stream live to Microsoft Data Center, it has to be the Office Pro Plus version. If you don't have that, but you still want that, then the only choice you have is upload the file on browser, which is OneDrive or Teams, and then you can do it. Is there an edit function for photos pasted in a slide? Magical crop like in Photoshop, probably Anindo is the expert in Photoshop, we can answer. All the features of Photoshop are not there, but 
remove background feature is there in case you want something like that. So here is a picture. I want to remove something. Click on the picture, picture format, remove background. It's not perfect, but depending on the type of picture, it sometimes works, sometimes you have to help it. So in this case, it found the object and rest of it. The magenta color will be removed. That's it. Now the background is transparent. Now if I want to improve that, you go to remove background. For example, I only wanted to keep this and not the sphere. I say mark areas to remove and you'll have to do this. You don't have to draw a perfect shape. Just go and draw some random thing. It's very smart in detecting the algorithm, tries to find boundaries and then maybe this is what you got. So that's how remove background works. That's one part of the Photoshop like features. Then we have some brightness, contrast, some recoloring and some artistic effects. So a lot of simplistic stuff can be done here, but real professional stuff, of course, you need Photoshop. OK, once again, please show how rotation of arrow independent of complete smart art. <laughs> OK. Um, all right, I'll have to show you this live, so please bear with me. Now the speed is good, so it shouldn't take a it should not be a problem. So I wanted a smart art first, so I'm going to create something. So explore, learn, apply, share, grow, whatever. I want this to be an iterative thing, so I convert it to an iterative thing. No problem. That's the easy part. Now I want this to be actually uh, looking like something solid. So I go to smart art design and choose something which has a solid effect. Want it to be colorful, so I choose colors. Uh, notice that when you choose colorful, many times gray comes, which is a bad idea. So try different ones till you get the right one. Now what I want is I want to select only the arrows and rotate them because at this stage, if you use any of the existing animations called spin, or something like that, it's not going to work. Spin is going to spin the whole smart art, which is not what we want. There are effect options which allow you all at once or one by one. One by one is even worse. If you have not tried it, it'll look like this, which is bad. If you choose all at once, it'll look equally bad. So bottom line, there is no way of doing this while smart art remains as a smart art. Not only that, if I try to select these guys and try to group it, even that is not going to work because within smart art, multi select does not allow group. Basically, you're stuck. You're not stuck. You go to smart art and tell smart art. Now you, you have done your job. Let me do my job. Just give me full control. That is when you go to convert to shapes. Now this is still a collection of shapes, so you have to ungroup it one more time because right now it just converted it to shapes which are grouped. Now I can select all these guys. Remove the unwanted one. Now I can group them and now the rotation or spin or whatever animation you wanted will work as expected. Now because these have same colors at some point that arrow is going to go on to the circle of the same color, so it's a good idea to prevent that this arrow from disappearing there. That's why it's a good idea to add some shadow so that it remains visible. That's about it. All right, next. Design ideas was interesting. Please explain again. Fair enough. So design ideas means what? I put some structure that I put text. Earlier I showed you put text and it converts it to picture or smart art. Here I am putting tasks questions, teaching, uh, teamwork, something like that. And I want a smart art. Now, of course, I can choose a smart art, but smart art is just going to convert it to some kind of shapes like this. It's not going to find icons for me, some visuals. So that is where design ideas comes into picture. Click on the design button and then click on design ideas and notice what it does. It found the right kind of icons also. So while that is happening, let me answer one question. Could you explain how to open design ideas? So you have to go to design menu and design ideas. There's one related setting file options. 
all this comes under what we call as PowerPoint designer. If it is not happening, check if this checkbox is off. And if it's getting irritating, you can disable it from here as well. If you don't see it in PowerPoint at all, that means you have older version of PowerPoint. In that case, you'll have to open the presentation on browser. There, 100% you will see design ideas. Yeah. Yes. There is one which is asking which Office version are you using currently? Please specify. I am using Office Pro Plus. So, and uh, you will notice that when you have Office Pro Plus, you get more frequent updates. Typically, uh, the frequency of updates, updates means new features, depends on what your IT has configured. Majority of IT professionals configure it at six monthly level, but technically you can get it at monthly level. So if you really want more frequent updates, request your IT team to do it at a monthly level for you. Now, because I am always working on these tools and I need to be ready with all the new features which are being added, and nowadays new features get added weekly, I need to get even faster updates. So there is another edition called Office Insider. If you go to Office Insider, search for it, you can also participate in it. Or you can request your IT. Ideally, IT team and people who are in adoption, that means people who are in training, consulting, teaching others how to use Office better, should be your Office Insider. So I am on the Office Insider version, which gives you updates typically every, every week. Of course, it doesn't install the whole 1 GB of Office. Only a few components which have changed those happen, so it's quite fast. Any more questions? I uh, there is a new question. Can we import designs or more shapes or GIF animations? So GIF animation does work in PowerPoint. Uh, sometimes what happens is when you insert a picture in PowerPoint, it reconverts it to a default resolution and in that conversion the GIF animations animation part gets lost but by all means you can insert GIF animations in PowerPoint. When I say import designs I don't understand what designs means. If you are saying can we have this particular list expanded by importing more I don't think that is possible but there are a lot of icons which are very professionally designed, so you should go to icons and explore them. And something which many people have not noticed, there is a very nice collection of 3D objects also which are useful in PowerPoint. Some of them are even animated 3D objects, so explore that. In fact, if you noticed in my first slide, what I showed you was a 3D object which I created using a part of a Windows 10, which is called, what is this called? It was created using 3D Paint, the 3D version of Paintbrush. So a lot of graphic capabilities available. And if you really want to go one step further, there is one more. There are add-ins and assuming your IT has not blocked adding of add-ins, you get a lot of good third parties which are providing you with visuals, designs, word art, and many, many other things. So explore add-ins. There doesn't seem to be any more questions. All right, so Anindo, anything you want to add or should we call it a day? No, I think we're good. Uh, we've recovered well enough after the outage and no further questions. So yeah, let's wrap it up for today. All right, so apologies for the unforeseen outage. I myself don't know what happened. I have to troubleshoot. And thank you for bearing with us. Thanks, Anindo, Zios, and Shesham for supporting me all throughout. And let's meet tomorrow with a larger audience. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.